should know. Um, Dr. Morgan, good to see you. This is kind of just one of those times of year that we just have to talk about this, um, with this new development. It's a little bit scary. Um, so what are the most common symptoms of dengue and wh what we should be on the lookout for? And so as we look at mosquitoes, mm -hmm. right, these are all mosquito-borne viruses. So we've got the dengue fever and Zika, and we talk about malaria. Mm -hmm. This is all uh, transmitted to humans by mosquitoes. And so some of the things we should be aware of if you get infected, fever, nausea, vomiting, but you also can have pain behind the eyes. You can have a little bit of mild bleeding, joint, muscle aches, rash. So this sort of distinguishes dengue from some of the other uh, fevers. Certainly if it becomes severe, you can end up in hemorrhagic shock. Rare, but that's one of the uh, warning signs. Now, do these symptoms, if we can pop those back up, that'll be great. Um, do all of those symptoms happen at once? Because when I hear, you know, joint pain, muscle aches, I'm like, huh, I'm in my 30s. I have those every right. day. You know <laughs> what I mean? But do all of those happen at once where you're not going to have kind of one without the other? Mm -hmm. Once you're bitten by the mosquito, yeah. symptoms usually begin within four to 10 okay. days. Oh, um, And then they last about two to seven days if you're going to have the normal mild case. Some mm -hmm. people do go on to get very severe damage dengue fever with uh, hemorrhage and shock. Right. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk numbers here. Okay, so so far this year, 745 cases of dengue have been identified among U.S. travelers since June 24th, with, mm -hmm. which the CDC says is a higher than expected number. And in Puerto Rico, officials have declared it a public health emergency. So why is this virus more prominent in some areas and not in others? You know what? Glad you asked that, yeah. Alex. <laughs> We've got these sweltering temperatures, yeah. right? So we have stronger storms. Mm -hmm. We've got hotter summers, warmer winters, and we just have a, a change in our climate. And so these mosquitoes now are migrating mm -hmm. because generally they survive in subtropical, sub-Saharan um, environments. And guess what? that's becoming more uh, more comfortable right. for the mosquitoes. And so that's what we are seeing. And of all of these cases, about 50% in the U.S. are in Puerto Rico, but interestingly, another 10% are in Florida. So 60% of these cases are in Florida and Puerto Rico. And of the cases in Florida, there are about 20 cases there. Two of them are innate to our country. They are not in travelers. They were literally bitten by mosquitoes that were already yeah. infected with the mm -hmm. fever here, with that virus here. And so we actually want to be on alert. We know it is now um, on our shores. Yeah, so we only have about 30 seconds left, but you mentioned Florida and Puerto Rico. Those are two mm -hmm. places that a lot of people are going to be traveling to That's over right. the summer with summer vacations. Um, what should we be doing to arm ourselves and to protect ourselves? You know, another great question. Make sure you are covered with as much clothing as mm -hmm. possible, lightweight clothing. Remember, mosquitoes are pretty poor flyers. They're weak flyers. Yeah. Have a fan on around you. Try not to be on at dusk or at dawn when they're really at their high feeding times. Mm -hmm. Stagnant water, and stagnant water really could just be still water. Yeah. Make sure it's emptied and changed frequently, and also insect repellent, something that is approved by the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, to make certain that you stay as safe as you possibly can. All right, Dr. Jane Morgan, Healthy Morning Contributor, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And of course, those great tips, we appreciate it. Yeah. We'll be right back.